Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. I'm here. I'm here for you all. Just nine more games left of this despair and just debacle we've seen unfold. This team was 19 and 15 at the 40 game mark or 39 game mark and now they're 20 and 22. It's been a really rough ride. They finally closed out their series against Minnesota going 1-7. One, one win in eight games against Minnesota. Again, outscored 32-12. to 12. Last night, probably one of their better games against Minnesota other than their 5-2 win against them eons ago in a lifetime where we were all happy. So it was a good game. They outshot the Wild 40 to about uh, 19, I believe. I didn't really pay attention to the wild shot count. It was the Coyote season high shot number, as high as it's been all season. And they only get one goal. They lose, they lose 4-1. It was a close game for most of the game in terms of the scoreboard. It was 1-1 until about middle of the third where the Minnesota Wild make it 2-1 and then quickly make it 3-1. And then, you know, the game ends right there so what happened the Coyotes just had so much more possession in the wild the whole game was pretty much played in Minnesota's end so that should translate to a win or at least an overtime point for the Coyotes but as you know I found out last progress game report that the Minnesota Wild were at the time of that video they were last placed in the West Division in terms of five on five possession and that's exactly what happened last night. The Coyotes dominate possession. Sure, their shots weren't really grade A and high danger. They had 40 shots. I was looking at the shot map. I would say about 12 to 13, 14 of those shots were in the house area. The house area being in front of the crease and between the hash marks in front of the goalie. So, you know, they had about 10, what did I say, 10 to 14 shots in the house area. But I remember a couple seasons ago, Take would always preach about deception and getting the goalie, the opposing goalie to move laterally and just getting the goalie to move so much where holes in the net start to open up. And I didn't really see that at all last night. I feel like a lot of the shots were either from the perimeter, from the point, or just square to Talbot. You rarely saw Cam Talbot make a desperation save, move, move, you know, from one side of the crease to the other side of the crease. I feel like a couple of the couple of good chances the Coyotes had, you know, that Chikrin slap shot near the end of the game where Talbot didn't even know he made the save. It was just a positional save, just being at the right place at the right time. And then Dvorak on one of the power plays where he went forehand, backhand, and hit Talbot in the five hole and then Peterson was there to get a couple whacks at it. Other than that, you had Dryden Hunts, Crossbar, and Post, but those were the only chances I saw that were really like goal worthy. You had Lawson Kraus who had about three partial breakaways and missed the net on pretty much all of them or just made a whiff of a shot on one of them. And then you, you look the wild, Nick Felino does it once and scores. So you see the disparity in like lethalness between the Wild and the Coyotes. The Wild, they don't need much. They'll get their chances and capitalize and execute. That's what they do. They don't possess the puck a lot in the opposing end. They just capitalize on their chances. They rely on their stingy defense to limit high danger chances, which is what the Coyotes, you know, that's what they should do. Last season when they were riding high in first place in the Pacific, that's what they would do to, to other teams. It would limit shots to the outside. And uh, Kemper was playing unbelievable, game, having a Vesna caliber season. A lot of the shots he would face weren't really high danger. And that's how the Cowboys would win games. And that seems to be what the Wild are doing. Their defense is incredible. They're not getting the Coyotes. They're not giving the Coyotes any an odd man rushes. The Coyotes tried so hard to get some odd man rushes. Their defense were engaging all night last night. They were controlling the puck in the zone. They weren't dumping and chasing. There were a lot of good things in terms of possession the Cowboys were doing and they need to continue if they want to get into the playoffs. But I just feel their shot choices and their 
their danger and lethalness of the Cowboys just weren't there. They couldn't finish on the opportunities they had. Even their, the goal they scored, the one goal on the power play by Dvorak, he shoots it from behind the net and banks it in. It wasn't really like a lethal goal. And uh, in terms of just how the game went, I thought the Cowboys pl- came out really good, really strong. They got an early power play and they capitalized. It was going really well. They weren't, they weren't getting into penalty trouble at all. And that, that's been their Achilles heel for the past, you know, 10 games. They'd come out of the gate flat, get into penalty trouble, get down on the scoreboard, scoreboard early, and then it's a hard fight back to climb that mountain. And then it was kind of the reverse last night where the Cowboys come out strong. They don't get into penalty trouble. They draw a penalty. They capitalize. But then they couldn't really elevate and go to that next gear for the rest of the game, even though they had the possession, they really just couldn't finish at all. So other news yesterday, Connor Garland is most likely injured for the rest of the season, a big blow to the team. We don't look to him to score, but he's a great playmaker, a great spark plug, an energizer bunny for the team. I mentioned last video, he only has one goal in 15 games, so it's not like the offense will die Without him, he wasn't really scoring, actually scoring goals uh, in the past 15 games. Hopefully, Bunting meshes well with Schmaltz and Keller on the top line. They looked good last night. I really liked Keller, Schmaltz, and Bunting, and John Hayden back in the lineup. But we saw Broussard and Peterson on the same line, which is funny because last video, I was like, why not just put Peterson and, Bun- and Broussard together? It seems like a good line, and... Um, that line looked okay. Peters, I like Peterson's game. He likes to possess the puck. He's not big of a dump and chaser like John Hayden is. Kessel had a pretty good game. Dryden Hunt's there. Uh, Larson had a good game too. Uh, the defense, OEL had a miserable game. He's having a miserable season. That first goal by the Wild, it was a bad line change, yes. But OEL was skating with his men down um, to Kemper. And then for some reason stops in the middle of the ice and the wild guy just keeps going to the front of the net, obviously, like you should do. Just not sure about that decision making by OAL to just stop in no man's land and not cover a guy. You, you both, your guy is skating to your net. And for some reason you stop up, like no one else is going to cover that guy. So why even stop up? And then on the third goal, Kemper and OEL totally out of position and they can't close that short post uh, area. And then the wraparound goal by Kaprizov just sealed the game from there. Uh, Yeah, other news yesterday besides the game, which was miserable, was some rumors that Dmitry Yaskin is going to sign with the Arizona Coyotes now. Yaskin hasn't played in the NHL for some time. He's been in the Russian KHL League, and he's been scoring a lot. He's scored back-to-back 30-goal seasons, back-to-back point-per-game seasons. He got 31 goals in 59 games this season and 38 goals in 58 games last season. Both seasons above 60 points, so above a point per game. The Coyotes need offense. Not sure if this is a solution, but it's a very low risk uh, signing if they go and follow through with it. I'm sure it'll te- it'll be for next season, obviously, I'm pretty sure. But I think next season, they'll see how he is at training camp. If not, he goes to Tucson and gives Tucson some extra firepower down there. Maybe he learns the system and maybe he gets a call up if the Cowdies need some goal scoring. Uh, he's a big body. He was drafted in 2011 a really long time ago when Bill Armstrong was the director of amateur scouting for the St. Louis Blues. So there's some history there between Bill Armstrong and Dimitri Yaskin. So that's it for me. Finally done with the Wild. They got LA Saturday night and then San Jose twice next week before a two-game series against Vegas. And then it's just San Jose and LA from there. They need a play like they played last night, but, you know, capitalize on their chances you need to get some fruit from the possession you you generate for yourself you know that offensive momentum all that possession 
you need to bear some fruit for all of that. You can't lose these types of games. These games are 100%. You need to win or push into overtime and get a point because they deserve to get at least a point out of that. They're still one point ahead of St. Louis in the final playoff spot. St. Louis has four games in hand. They play Colorado a bunch of times, but the Avalanche are in COVID protocol. I'm pretty sure Grubauer isn't going to play for a couple or just one more week. So you'll see Devin Dubnik in that for the Avalanche. So uh, I hope, well, I don't hope for anything. Um, It's pretty likely St. Louis will get a lot of points out of those Colorado games just due to the, the Avalanche being in and out of COVID protocol and Grubauer not being in net for a couple of those games. So we'll see how it all shakes out. Cowboys got to get wins and points immediately if they want to stay in the playoffs, if that's what you all want. Uh, they need to start getting wins. You know, seven losses in their past eight games isn't going to cut it. In, in, the, in a playoff run to the end of the season, you cannot lose seven regulation games in eight games. So we'll see what happens. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word. And thank you for your support.